All right then, so before we start to actually create our Firestore database, I just wanna take a couple of minutes to talk about what Firestore is and how we're gonna structure our data into different collections. So basically, Firestore is a NoSQL database and it deals with collections and documents. Now, a collection is just that. It's a collection of documents that belong together. For example, in our project, one of our collections will be called projects like this. And in that projects collection, we'd have a series of different documents. And each one of these documents would be a project. It would represent one single project. Now, we wouldn't go put in user objects in here or notification objects or anything like that because that doesn't belong in a project collection. The collection is projects and that is all we store inside this collection. So then each document looks very much like a JavaScript object in that it has key value pairs. So for example, the key could be a title and the value would be a string house party. We'd have another key called content, which would be a string as well, and some other keys as well. Anything to do with a project would go inside that project document. So in our project, in the whole React application, we're gonna use three collections. First of all, we're gonna have our projects collection, which we just talked about. And the fields inside this collection are gonna be the title field, the content field, the author first name, author last name, the author ID, that is the user ID, if you like, of who created this project, and also a timestamp so that we know when the project was created. So we're gonna have two other collections, the users collection, which is gonna contain information about each individual user. So each user will have their own document inside a users collection and also a notifications collection. So each notification will have a separate document inside that collection as well. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much depth about these two right now because we're not gonna start building with users or notifications for another few lessons at least. So I will come back to these for now though, I want to concentrate on the projects collection and we'll create our Firestore in Firebase and we'll just add a couple of dummy project documents in there. All right then, so you want to head on over to your Firebase console over here for your project and then go to database on the left. Now we want to start up a Firestore database, which is this one at the top. It's still in beta, but we can very much use this. Otherwise you can use a real time database, which is the older database that Firebase provided us with. This is the new one and this is the one I prefer. So I'm going to create a database. Now I'm going to start this in test mode so that we can easily access and change our data. So as long as we don't share our project with other people, then we don't have to worry about this and we will look at rules later on to secure our data. So let's enable this now. And then when that is done, it's going to take you to your Firestore database over here. Now this over here, the rules, this is where we can edit security rules later on. Right now, anyone with your database reference can access the data or write to the database. So as long as you don't go dishing this out, then it's absolutely fine for when you're developing. And that's absolutely fine. However, if you come to deploy this, then this is where we want to go to write our rules. And we'll cover that later on just to lock down our data so that other people and other applications can't just come in and start to read or create data inside our Firestore. We also have a simulator over here for some rules later on, which will come in handy. So the data over here, this is where we can add data or remove data. And to begin with, what I'm going to do is just add a collection over here. So the collection ID is going to be projects. That's what the collection is called. And then it's asking us now to add in a field. This first one over here, document ID, we don't need to enter into this because it's going to auto generate an ID for us. So each document that we create, it's going to have a randomly generated unique ID associated with that document. And then if we wanted to query a specific document later on, we can use that unique ID to go out and query it. OK, so the first field is going to be the title and that is going to be of type string. And the value of that is just going to be house party. OK, so the next one is going to be content. And it's going to be string again, and I'll just say blah, blah, blah. And then the next field is going to be 
the author first name string again it's going to be Ryu we'll add another field which is going to be author last name and we need to make sure we spell author correctly which I cannot do okay author last name and this is going to be Hoshi and that will do for now I think I know we said we're going to have an author ID and also a timestamp on this but we'll cover those later for now this will do so let's save that document now and it'll take a second and you'll notice now we have a projects collection over here on the left and inside when we click on projects we can see all of the documents over here that we have inside the projects collection now we just have this one project right here and you see this number or rather collection of letters and numbers this is the unique id that firebase auto generated for us for this document okay now if we click on that we can see over here all the different fields and the values of those fields we can add new fields if we want to or we can add new documents if we want to as well now i'm not going to do that i just wanted to show you how we can set up some original dummy data inside this firestore if we want to but what we really want to do is add documents from our code so that when someone fills in that form to create a new project then it's going to create a document inside this project's collection we don't want to manually add the documents here all the time we want that to be done automatically from our application when a user enters into that form and clicks submit so we're going to start that process in the next video